here's my uh, 2020 Celestron Evolution. Um, so that's carbon fibre C8 that's on it. And uh, with this uh, mount, I find it really, really um, convenient to use because there's no counterweights. So I used to run a C11 on an AVX, which means it's a 28 pound scope with 30 pound of counterweight on it. So it's a lot of weight to attach and detach and carry to the car. With this one, no counterweights. Uh, the tube assembly, I don't really think it's much lighter than an aluminum tube C8, uh, but it is um, fairly, it's just around eight or nine pounds. Um, and the whole mount and the scope, you can actually pick that up. So it probably weighs uh, maybe 30 or something like that, the whole thing. So I could easily carry it out of my deck. Anyway, I just want to show you, so 2020. Now let's just take a quick walk here. Outside, I've got, uh, just for a bit of testing here, it's a friend's um, original classic orange tube C8. Uh, this one I think is from about 1980. I know Celestron don't keep track of the serial numbers in terms of what date they were, but I'm just uh, dating it by the labeling and the features on it. It looks to be around 1980, it could be earlier. Um, so the interesting thing about this is um, the tripod's all aluminum, but very, very sturdy, like I could sit on a tripod with no problem. Uh, this one's got the equatorial wedge and the drive here. There's actually two motors in here. It would be AC if you plugged in. I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be running an AC power into this thing when I'm standing outside on the deck, which, you know, could be damp, I guess. But I, what I'm really impressed with this is a 40-year-old scope. Um, the optics are very, very sharp. I'm sure you some pictures I took through it. And it's completely controllable. So the manual controls are here. Here's the clutch for the uh, the deck. There's the right ascension. Hmm. With this fork mount, I get a bit confused with it. But you see I've got the, port, the fork mount pointed north, right? So it would be, um, pull, I could pull or align it that way and then only have to move it in deck. So it would be this way, in fact. So you can see if I just do this, the scope responds, right? So it's like a direct connection to the gears. You can actually feel it's very, very good. And you can actually loosen the clutch and have a really light movement to move it around at high power. Um, and then this one's the altitude. So you probably won't see it because it's a very fine motion. But I'm just turning the dial here and it actually moves this tine, which moves the fork up and down. So uh, I was looking through the 16.5 mil eyepiece. Um, oh, what's the power? I'm not sure. A 10 mil would be uh, 200 because it's a 2000 mil focal length. So a 16.5 would be somewhere around like maybe 150x. So yeah, easily to get it on targets with the two controls. And then if you want to study, you can lock this up. And if you're polar aligned, then you'll be able to follow it just by using this one. Actually works where it's fully locked or not, but it's much easier to move this way. You see the scope responding there, right? So I'm impressed that, uh, you know, a 2020 C8 can't move without power. And if you forget to charge it or you don't have power, then you're done observing, right? Well, this is completely manual. If you did hook it up to the motor, it's got deck and right ascension motors. And so then you could actually just uh, have it f as soon as you get on the target you want, it'll just follow. So I'm impressed that after uh, 40 years, this thing still works uh, very, very well. Uh, correct is a little bit cloudy, just needs a bit clean. The mirror looks bright though, doesn't look deteriorated, so pretty impressed.